This is the Hypothetically Sound Podcast. Hosted by Alec, Randy, and Xavier. Where we take a hypothetical look at the world around us. Exploring the what-ifs, maybes, and how-comes. Join in on the unfiltered, raw, and real conversations as we explore the world around us. Welcome back, everybody, to Hypothetically Sound. We hope that you're having a good day. And welcome back to another Mythical Creatures episode. In this one, we're going to talk about one I find pretty interesting because uh, it's a unique one. And that is the Boogeyman. Now, what makes the Boogeyman interesting to me, at least, is that he's not like a creature that exists. The Boogeyman, uh, when it first started out, was used as a way to put fear into children for doing wrong acts. So mm-hmm. it was used as like a a fear template, like your kids misbehaving. Well, a the Catholic anti-masturbation tool. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like a uh, boogeyman does mean the devil uh, in many cultures. Uh, so yeah, it's the boogeyman is wild just because, like I said, it doesn't have its own presence. It really doesn't even have a identity. It's just a right. it doesn't have an literally a mythical creature that it, people right. made up in many it cultures. Is. It is uh, the embodiment, really, of terror. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, on some real shit, like, the Boogeyman's interesting because I feel like no matter what age you are, you always have one with you. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, like, Boogeyman, now, like, nowadays, like, it can be on anything. It's used in shows to describe, like, uh, serial killers, like, they're the Boogeyman. Or, like, it's used in the same realm as the Tooth Fairy. Uh, for some people, like it's just it's everywhere used interchangeably with anything. Uh, do you guys recall any times that the uh, boogeyman was used against you as a child or even adult? Oh, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if Xavier you remember, but when we were a lot yeah. younger, when yeah, grandma had a house lot. in Minneapolis, uh, we had some cousins, uh, maybe brothers to some who who like to like to play boogeyman with us all the time. Call. You know, they would turn off all the lights and try to scare us, uh, lead us to, you know, the ad- not the attic, but like the porch and shit and make a scream and scare the shit out of us when we were like, what, yeah, four? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes tape us, tape us to a door and then shut off all the lights and make spooky noises like boo, but we're four. Yeah. So that shit sound awful. You know what I'm saying? Because we were panicking. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk on this because we, we, you brought, you've brought this up before. Yeah. Now. It's not an excuse. Uh, it makes me a shitty person. But I yeah, yeah. did it because I was still five years, four years younger than Kevin and Xavier. I mean, uh, Kevin and Jamal. And so, like, you guys were four. I was only 11. They were 14, 15, uh, 16, whatever so the age was. So you picked on us. It so you wouldn't either, get picked on. It was either join in with them or be part of the like bullying and like, like i said doesn't make me a good person <laughs> and like i became your guys's boogeyman because my boogeymen were th- right there too i uh, like and, like and don't get wrong like i did stop them from doing certain things that i thought was too extreme or if i thought things were going too far i did my best to end it like when you guys are on the porch and they're sitting there laughing and like i'm like okay this has gone on for 60 seconds, 90 seconds. That's enough. Like, they are legitly terrified. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. that's enough. Or when our parents would make you guys box. Like, I would like, no, that's, like, don't need to do that. That's enough. Uh, so, yeah, like, I just wanted to talk about it. Like, it makes me a shitty person. Like, looking back on it, I should have done more. But at the same time, I was 11-year-old that was being bullied <laughs> by his older cousins into bullying his younger brother and cousin. Uh and that's the thing. I think I think that's what makes the boogeyman so scary in in general is this fear that there is something worse. Like the boogeyman is also used to make people do things. It's kind of like Slenderman or other uh, evil creatures that people like use to prey upon the mentally weak mm-hmm. or mentally susceptible into doing things that they normally want to do out of this fear that this mythical creature is going to come. And them. Come uh, in them? Come come on them? Weird. Uh, that went weird. Uh, no, this is going to attack said them. I said, no, come at them, I said. Come at them. 
Okay. Uh, Weirdo. <laughs> uh, I I do remember. I think the there is a moment where the boogeyman was actually used, and it was for homework. <laughs> like they were like, "Oh, if you don't do your homework, the boogeyman's gonna come and get you at night." And it was like teachers. It wasn't even parents. Cause parents didn't care. Uh, it was teachers used it in school. Like, you guys don't do this. You misbehave. There's you had to watch out for the boogeyman. Of course, the parents and the teachers are being sarcastic because they know it's fake. But you got a bunch of like third and fourth graders like, oh shit, the boogeyman's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's just an interesting concept that like anything that goes bump in the night that's unexplained is either ghost or the boogeyman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, it's weird. That's a universal concept that means anything i guess mm-hmm. yeah there's just uh an evil figure in every every place that can be associated with being a boogeyman of that particular area mm. and i think that's what makes the boogeyman the ultimate like horror film villain that i think is not utilized correctly like it's the thing like there could be a thousand boogeyman movies because like it it literally could be a different iteration every single time. Or even a movie where the boogeyman literally changes it. Like, you don't know what the boogeyman is because it changes shape. It's like a, a, a thing from Harry Potter that changes to your worst fear. Which mm-hmm. I think is what she made it after was the boogeyman. Uh, so, yeah. Makes sense. I mean, yeah, yeah that's fair. Quite literally, in what it is, is... Anything and everything. Yeah. So, what is your guys' takes on parents or adults who use the boogeyman to try to trick trick their children into doing things, right or wrong? Wrong. I think it's a mixture. I think if you're doing it, you know, in a way that's not super terrible, I don't think it's necessarily bad. To kind of scare your child into listening. Like, I think wrong. It, oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. sorry. Oh, I was just, I was just gonna say, I think it's like you know, just kind of like uh, encroaching upon the fear of the unknown, sort of aspect of human nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's wrong to do that to kind of use that, stimulate that part of the brain. Okay, Alec, why do you think it's wrong? I, uh, so like I just I don't know. I feel like there's just better ways to communicate with a child on how to uh, w- what's right or wrong, right? Like you shouldn't you shouldn't do the whole like oh don't do this or the boogeyman's gonna come and get you. Like I feel like that could cause some issues for some kids in the long run. Like thinking they see shit at night. Like the same parents that do that are the same parents that complain that their kid is up screaming at like 3 a.m. and running to the room and shit, you know, because they, they heard something, you know, the house settling or whatever, right? Yeah. Right. And it, it's crazy if you think about it. The Boogeyman is very similarly used as uh, to Santa, except for the Boogeyman is all negative, but Santa can be negative or positive. Like, if you're a good kid, Santa brings you presents. If you're a bad kid, he brings you coal. Or the Tooth Fairy, like, she, there's different iterations where people use her as... If you're a good kid and you lose your tooth and you put all your pillows, she'll bring you money. If not, she can blah, 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 be scary. Uh, and it's crazy that the book, like, that the boogeyman was seen as the devil, uh, like the devil on your shoulder uh, mm-hmm. when it first started. And then all of a sudden, parents couldn't control their kids. And in all the cultures, apparently, couldn't control their kids and started using this mythical creature. Uh, that was said to be the devil at first and started using it as a way to like scare their kids into doing the right thing. I mean, would it be hard though? Because like all myths start way, way back, usually, right? Yeah. So, like back then, kids go missing, just be like, oh, it's a boogeyman. Mm-hmm. Like, you know why little Timmy's not in your class anymore? Because he ain't his goddamn vegetables. The boogeyman got him. Now your kid's eating vegetables and is crying because he thinks Timmy's dead. I mean, Timmy might be dead, <laughs> but like, you know what? He thinks a, a fucking strange monster took Timmy, and he's next. You know what I'm saying? A strange yeah. monster could have took Timmy. We don't know. 
Uh, something, dude. No, it's great. Like, RIP, Timmy. <laughs> RIP, Timmy. Uh, like, y- you think about it. Uh, isn't that what the, like, it, do you think the boogeyman is was used back when it first created? Like, it was said to be the devil, blah, blah, blah. Do you think it was used more by religious people or by non religious people who couldn't use the Bible? 100% and, religious people, dude. Yeah. yeah but isn't man. that what the Bible's there for? Is like to scare the kids into doing the right thing? Like, that's why there's all no, these I mean, God's wrath and Jesus. This. I mean, oh, I, I think, like, from like, some families that I've seen, they more they more or less tell them like tell people it's the devil's work they're going to hell more than like mm-hmm. God's wrath you know or like Jesus will punish you you know mm-hmm. it's more like ah you're going to hell you know mm-hmm. blah 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 <laughs> Jesus is the forgiving <laughs> I was I didn't mean to say Jesus is a negative I know I know I was just Bible, saying like God good. yeah God and Jesus are the uh, same thing like it doesn't. God and Jesus <laughs> are the forgiving, you know, figures of it. And, uh, mm-hmm. and if like the boogeyman started as a devil, it's really not hard to be like, oh yeah, the boogeyman's a uh, devil incarnate. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. He's like the devil on earth, trying uh, working his powers. You know? Yeah. So I think boogie- much- yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, much like you know. Most of the religious following, you get enough people to believe in something if they're utilizing it to create a certain outlook on something or to sway people's actions or opinions of something very easily mm-hmm. would make sense how it was used and why it spread so easily. It's like you see, you know, word of mouth is, oh, I scared my kid or scared people into doing this and that by saying the boogeyman. And then that just kind of spreads because... Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, Billy really Johnny used to, uh, used to touch himself a lot, but I told him if he touched himself at night, the boogeyman was going to get him. And he, he hasn't used touched himself since. Haven't caught him since. <laughs> Little Timmy, like, bless his heart, rest in peace, really helped us out. You know, um, but uh, 50 years down the road, Little Billy became a serial killer because he was so traumatized from his childhood. That's, are, are you guys ever afraid of becoming someone's boogeyman? Like, just subconsciously? Um, it's not hard, right? Because, like, like Rand said, when we were lo- younger, like we loved our brothers and cousin, but like they, there was were a fear, fucking, yeah, you know, torturing yeah. the shit out of us. So, like, there was a fear when our parents left. We 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 would cry. We would be like, "Please don't go to the casino or whatever the fuck you're doing," you know, mm-hmm. because we knew what was coming right after, and like they, they were our own personal boogeyman at the time, right? I mean, you guys ever. Fear being that again, ran or just like growing up in Minneapolis and doing everything I had to do to like survive being big, fat, and whatnot, and just being in the hood and everything like that subconsciously was the goal was to be the boogeyman. Like, that's why I fought so often. It's like if I'm known as this bully or this kid that you don't mess with because he's gonna win the fights, he ain't afraid to fight. Like, you're going to be left alone. So back then, like, without knowing, yeah, I wanted to be people's boogeyman. But nowadays, yeah, no, there's no reason for me to want to be someone's reason they're scared into doing something or not doing something. Like, that's not what I want to be. That's not who I am. Like, I want to be that shiny light that helps you become better, not uh, the force that drives you to something negative because of something negative. So, yeah, I guess there is a fear of being such a negative force in someone's life that that in the back of their head they have a fear of you. Like that's not what you want. That's mm-hmm. that just sounds toxic. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I never fear it because I do I strive every day to also not be that person. So that's the thing, like, I strive and I try, but I also know that I have the ability to be that, and I could do it very easily and probably not lose sleep over it. I probably am somebody's. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it's just because you're blunt, so if someone takes it, like... Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you can hug it out the next time I see you if you want. That's uh, 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 <laughs> the thing. It's just like help me. 
I don't want to be that person because it's not who I see myself as. But I, like I said, I know I could be that, and I don't think I would lose sleep over it. Uh, I don't. Don't what? Lose sleep? Actually, I probably gain <laughs> sleep. Honestly. <laughs> Probably sleep real good at night knowing someone out there is afraid that I'm going to just show up one day. Probably Sounds really some weird. Some kids on the internet that you yelled at and told them that their dad's not ever going to be proud of them. Dude, they need to know. They need to <laughs> fucking know that because they went fucking eight and three on League of Legends that their dad does not give up. All right. They need to know that they have one good game for the first time in four days. Their dad does not care. All right. So Alex drive to be the boogeyman strives from his own unproven love from his father. You think <laughs> I give a shit what they might think about me? No. You know what? I hope. I hope when he finally decides to listen to any of these, it's this one. <laughs> so he know for sure. So I'm proud, proud of you, Alex. Me too, um, man. Thanks, guys. That's why I put you I as the really artist for my really emotes. Really. Yeah, man. I mean, it's because I drew them, but for sure. Thank you. Uh, uh, not a plug or anything, but I just pulled another legendary on Dislight. I just got Ares. Okay, why are you why are you <laughs> why are you playing games while we record it, dude? What the fuck's wrong with you? And with that, <laughs> we want to thank everybody for tuning in Thanks, to the shortened episode. Thank you very much. It's fun, as you know. It is time for that shout out by Alec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to anyone who sat through that genie episode the whole way through. That shit was a mess. It like, props was to you. Chaotic. That shit was a mess. Like it was a lot of yelling. And it was just it was everywhere. So thank you. And shout yeah, out to that. my dog for deciding that at the end of the podcast he wanted to get up and shake his entire body so you could hear him and lick my arm. Wait, so he can shout out whenever and whoever he wants? But I no, can. I'm going to talk to him after this is done. I just don't want to yell anymore. Okay? I edit so I could do, I could add it in post. <laughs> True, that too. That too. He technically could. He, he, he do got that power. You know? uh, but you guys know the drill. Make sure to follow us on any social media site that you're on. Hypothetically Sound. Uh, head over to YouTube to see a video version of this and by video version i mean we're using png uh tuber thing or majiggers uh some very fancy stuff that my boomer mind can't wrap around it's actually very simple just head to youtube and watch it <laughs> and uh we have a sprite challenge all kinds of videos that are fun and interesting uh, uh so go check them soon out you can see xavier maybe drink some dirt soda yeah. some dirt soda <laughs> some <laughs> other sodas so exciting yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got one hit wonder contest, all kinds of stuff, content galore, uh, wrestling stuff, all kinds of stuff. Just if you have an interest, we probably cover it. And if it's not there, you know, leave a comment and we'll do it because we're here we're for desperate. you. Yeah, desperate. Yeah, we're That's... here for you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick one. <laughs> if we're here for you. It sounds better. Yeah, yeah here yeah, for you. For you. <laughs> And until next time, guys, have a great one. Deuces. Thank you. Love you. Thank you for listening to Hypothetically Sound. We hope you enjoyed the episode. All episodes can be found at hypotheticallysound.podbean.com, as well as on Apple, Spotify, and Pandora. For full unedited video versions of the podcast, please visit us at youtube.com slash hypothetically sound.